quick um, re-intro, I guess. Um, okay, everybody, welcome to the Smart Sites Partner Lunch and Learns. Today we have user centrics on the call. I'm very excited about this because uh, we are, I think, ahead of the game here. Well, depending on what state you're in, in some states we are behind in learning about this. Uh, but this is uh, user consent management. Um, the big kind of um, player here in Europe is GDPR, and user centrics is really the gold standard uh, in Europe. Uh, if you go to, I mean, there's so many websites like uh, I was just on Mercedes Benz, and, and, and they're powered by uh, user centrics. Uh, when you go to that website, you know, a big thing pops up that says, "Hey, you know, do you accept?" Um, and here's kind of uh, you know uh, all the disclaimers. Um, and it's it's already in Europe, um, and um, it's gonna come to the United States um, federally right now. California has a thing. I think Illinois has something. New York State has something. Uh, but there's going to be something more. And it's going to be federal, and it's only a matter of time. There's so many things about it. Um, just uh, you know, if you listen to like, Senate hearings and stuff, so uh, it's good to know this um, and to be aware and knowledgeable and user centric is so aware of this. When I talked to them, they said, hey, listen, Mike, we're investing in the US market because we know it's coming to you soon. So uh, very excited to get educated on this. Uh, so without further ado, um, Eden, Philip, please take it away. Awesome, I'll, I'll start off here. Um, you, you started off about, you, you talked about legislation. Oh, let me talk about myself first. Uh, I'm Philip Kushmaro. I am the VP of Marketing at User Centrics. Uh, thank you very much for having us. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm just gung ho when it comes to all this stuff. Uh, user centrics, like as you said, uh, a consent management platform. Uh, the idea here is only when you want to be tracked or you know be cookied, you are you do it. You you know only when you get the, that that con only when you consent to it, a, a website is allowed to actually do it. That's that's the idea here. Now, you talked about legislation a lot, Mike. And yes, there is an element in there, but if we're gonna wait for legislation to happen, uh, we're talking about three, four years down the road. And as we know, there are two types of states in um, in the US, there are blue and red states. And depending on the state, uh, enforcement is also here, nor here nor there, right? Um, so one of the things that we're trying to also explain to everybody that everybody's aware that data privacy is a thing, um, they're not really aware, you know, there are people talking about like how Facebook is tracking you and how their, you know, cookies following you and, and you talk about something and kind of it pops up in, in ads or you searched for it before and you see it in ads, uh, on Facebook and all the social media. Uh, the idea here is not everybody's really aware of what, what, what that really, really does mean. Um, it's not just these ads popping up, but it's, it's to, it's very easy for somebody at Google or an algorithm developed by somebody at, at Google or any other high, you know, website that's relevant to tracking to figure out everything about you, not just, um, you know, where you shopped yesterday. So what we're trying to do here is explain that this consent that is needed isn't just a legislative thing. It's something that people should be screaming out. So for example, if you look at the little icon on the top left of the corner of your URL where it says meetgoogle.com, right? It's a little it's a little lock. So everybody's aware that we're in a uh, SSL certified connection. It's secure, we don't have to worry. So what we're trying to do, user centric is trying to do now is, well, it's, 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 we're grading these campaigns as we speak, is get people aware that if, there is no cookie banner. If there's no pop-up saying, hey, we need your consent, there's something wrong, right? Because a company should be asking for that, right? That's the, this is the idea behind of what, what's going on in the United States right now. Because like I said, legislation is not enough sometimes. And we wanna be all the time, we want everybody to be aware all the time due to the fact that consent needs to be a part of the user experience. So instead of getting annoyed on these pop-ups, they're gonna say, oh, great. Okay, this pop-up came up. This this company is transparent in what they're doing when it comes to tracking and um, it builds trust. At the end of the day, this is what we want. And uh, anybody who's a marketer understands that trust is probably one of the top things that are, if not the top thing you need when it comes to selling. 
right? If there's no trust, you're not going to sell anything. Well, you might, but then there's buyer's remorse, and I don't want to get into that right now. This is not a this is not a marketing uh, a lunch and learn, um, but this this is why this is so important. So keep that in mind uh, moving forward um, in general. And yeah, I'm going to let Idan now kind of show a little bit of our solution, and then we can kind of go back and forth with questions and answers, if that's okay with everybody. All right, awesome. You done, you good? Do I need to talk for like another two minutes? Because I can, you know I can. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Thank you, Mike, for having us, and uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this session. Uh, greetings from Amsterdam. Uh, really nice uh, to be part of like a uh, user centric so I'm uh, in the team for five months I'm in charge of the international partnerships I'm working with the uh, web developers and aid agency like uh, around uh, Europe and uh, now in the US as well in order to bring this message of like a uh, consent management a lot of people say just like annoying uh, cookie banner and like it jump and what does it does and, like uh, what can I do with it and it's not only about the legal part and i think like at least half of it is like a marketing tool that support like uh, brands and uh, marketeers to understand their users understand why people give their consent and what kind of messages they are willing to uh, to give which at the end of the day is where the user is willing to meet you so where you can address your message this or the channels and this kind of like optimization um this is uh, the place to be i would like to show uh, some of uh, the uh, the examples here i will start with our website and then um we can go to uh to other uh companies that we're working with uh, so with you i will just share my screen All right, can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect, thank you very much. All right, so welcome to the user-centric website that uh, Philip is working very hard in order to improve it and to make it like uh, really one of the best uh, compliance websites uh, that are there. Uh, you probably uh, know this uh, uh, banner, compliance banner. Um, there are a few rules in order how to uh, create the banners, uh, what we're supposed to do and how it's supposed to uh, be a uh, user friendly in order not to mislead the user. So we at user centric side try to make it like a really straightforward and I will go like uh, in the small steps like to see how much uh, we can uh, make it uh, happen and relevant. So in our banner, first of all, the fact that we have like uh, two buttons, one deny, one to accept. It's already a thing that you will see in the examples that some of them have only accept and not giving the deny option is kind of nudging, which uh, marketeers decide to take the risk in order to do it. Uh, it's very easy to put things on front like the legal notice and or the privacy policy in order for users to feel comfortable to come in and to uh, have like more information. And one of the most important thing is the option to get, to see the different services. So, for example, in our website, we have four different categories that uh, we decide to have the services on, uh, which is, uh, as you can see, functional marketing, essential, and other data processing. Uh, we can take, for example, the marketing one, and as you can see, like really familiar and known like services. And again, what we have in mind is to make sure that the, that the user have the uh, best of knowledge and most uh, easy way in order to consent and to give their approval for this uh, specific uh, service. In this case, we can take the uh, Facebook, for example, to learn on the topic. And this is the description on the service itself, which is something that, again, user friendly and to go and understand why we collect this data, how we collect this data, and more, most of all, like the timing that we can collect this kind of a data. Um, and this is something that the user can come to the uh, brand or the uh, vendor and say, like, I didn't give this consent. And like this, they can prove their uh, mind to it. So in our uh, service, we can give it on the uh, category level or on the different service level just to make the life of the user like uh, very easy. And we can also like uh, accept the specific one, deny or to save our different ones. 
In this case, we have like a YouTube video here that cannot be played without giving a consent. So a lot of people refer to it as a, a cookie banner, but actually what it does, it takes down all the trackers and all the technologies that are run in the background of the website and block them from collecting the data and enable the user to decide which kind of services or technologies we are able to, um, to, uh, to use and to work and to give also the user the ability to go again and change uh, their preferences in order to really give this kind of consent. So here in marketing, for example, I will just approve it and the uh, video will be played. So this is uh, our uh, website, as we said, like very straightforward. Any question about this kind of banner before we jump into the other uh, examples? No. All right, thank you. So uh, we try to pick uh, our uh, favorite one. So uh, I think uh, all of us like uh, to do some shopping and why not to do shopping with Zalando? I don't know how familiar Zalando is uh, in the US, but in Europe, it's like uh, one of the leading uh, e-commerce websites. Um, as you can see here, they have a different type of banner because there are uh, enterprise uh, clients, so they have the ability to design on their own the banner itself. Um, in this case, if you can see here, they take their group of like websites, which is a cross domain function, which with the one, uh, one uh, banner that they, they can do it like for all of their websites. And again, change the wording between uh, like accept or that's okay in order to make the, to give the user the uh, ability to choose and feel comfortable about their choice. And you can see this banner will not move from the website unless we clicking that that's okay. And then you can still engage with the website. As you saw, like in user centrics, you cannot, like the banner was in the middle of the website. It was very annoying to do something in the background. Same we have uh, with Porsche also like very clean and neat. You can see like the back, uh, the black background or white background. Um, and this, uh, I would say like the, most of the company is working. So e-commerce is one of our like our leading uh, industries we're working with, and also automotive. In this case, they also design their own in order to like give the analytics. They are not showing showing like the specific services, but still it's make more sense. And if we want more details, we can go to their website. All right, let's go to another fancy car. Uh, here you can see the uh, Mercedes uh, website with Porsche and Mercedes. We're working globally. And uh, this are a nice rollout with one of our leading agencies in Germany, UDV. Um, again, you can engage with the website and scroll down with the website. But unless we're giving the consent, the banner will be um, shown and like uh, to be harder to uh, engage with the, uh, with the website. We also support our local team, which is uh, Byron Munich, because the company is from Munich. Uh, and this is something that not a lot of people have. They have the older version, they still work on it. So also here, we can check the different kind of uh, services and knowledge. Uh, it's up to the companies to decide if they want to, uh, inter to integrate with the uh, new version. But every uh, new client that we have, having um, the new version of, uh, of the CMP. The last example that I will show is my favorite bank, Commerce Bank. Uh, and this uh, also show, uh, I think, a topic about trust. When it's come to the banking system, they have a lot of regulation. So working with them, it's challenging us to be really uh, in, the, in the front and uh, giving all the accessibilities to those kind of uh, information. Again, more settings, very straightforward and simple. And I'm very happy that uh, both of my banks in Germany and in Amsterdam are uh, used by uh, user centric, so it's good. And any question about um, the examples? Um, I think I have one question. So for the version where it's like a disclaimer on the bottom, you know, and you could still go through the website, they just like grayed out. Kind of like, what's the on like what, what's like the logic there just like applying the law if it's the law you know the law maybe says hey you have to have the user accept all these things before they could use your website 
you know, but there they could kind of use it before you hit accept or you know, I'm just trying to like, yeah, understand like how that. So it's not, it's not, a, it's not a, if they can use our website or not, it's if we can track them while they use our website or not. So is it like not tracking until you hit accept? Yes. Or Perfect. they hit, if they hit deny, they can still use the website because they're not, they're also not allowed to deny access to the website if they say deny, right? They, 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 yeah, they, they, they uh, there's some, I think there's some sites that actually completely block you unless you say accept that they're like the, you have be, ha but that's like a risk that they're willing to take because they want all, all the, it's, it's just a risk assessment. They're like, I want my, I want the data. I want to track them. So they can't do anything unless they say accept. Porsche won't do that. Mercedes won't do that. Um, but uh, in in the Porsche example, or, the, or all the examples we talked about, we saw just now, if they say decline, they can still use the website just fine. Just we the, the marketing or any other tracking. So for example, also Google Analytics as a third party tracker can't work either. I see. So, so is it uh, almost like fair to say, like uh, for example, we track visitors in Google Analytics yeah. Um, so if you install user centrics again in a way that the user has to hit accept for that stuff to even start tracking, and I don't know, say five percent of the users don't hit accept, um, you know, it'll almost like show as a five percent drop in traffic. Yes. So <laughs> I'll give you an example of somebody separate. All right, not not user like somebody happened to talk to me uh, a week ago in, a, in an online geniuses, and in, um, you guys are familiar with online geniuses Slack group. Anybody there? Anyway, whatever. Uh, it's a it's a group of digital marketers. It's got like forty thousand people in there. Um, somebody just contacted me and said, "Hey, does anybody know about what, what CMP is?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah," because I just joined User Centrics two months ago. And she said, "I, I don't know what happened. Uh, the I, we put the banner up and we lost all traffic." I'm like, "Yeah, because it's working the way it's supposed to work." Now, here's the thing: most marketers, you know, obviously me as being one of them, uh, now on the on the on the on this side of, I'm in the dark side or light side, depending on how you look at it. Um, I I can see where a marketer says, no, no, I don't want this. I'll take the risk. Let's just say if it's legislative, okay? I'll take the risk and I won't put it up there. And uh, hopefully maybe somebody won't sue me one day. Now, I'm not here to fear monger at all, um, but what we're trying to do with user centrics is beyond just being compliant is also trying to be business centric as as well and we understand this and what we're doing on our back end is help you with your opt-in rates so you being also compliant and also still have that marketing data that's that's i think this differentiates us between a lot of other just okay just be compliant and that's it tools is that we care about the business <laughs> as well. Like, again, this is me, you know, kind of selling it, but I am the VP of marketing, so I might as well. Um, but that's that's the idea. That's what differentiates us. So yeah, you 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 went in the back end, you done? Is that you done? That you yeah, that's you. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm just like uh, supporting your points here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you Thank you. Yeah, sure. So so I the main thing that like a lot of companies are looking at this in, in the legal perspective and we're trying to support like opt-in rate it's something that like we are discussing all the time because this is what makes the difference like i just tried to to uh yeah. hello <laughs> Life and COVID life, man, it's all good. Yeah, exactly. I got two running around here. Well, they're not here right now, but yeah. So, so on the, on this perspective, we, we give that uh, we give the uh, the clients the opportunity to to get out a, a report to say like what is like the daily opt-in rate and having the understanding of like uh, the timing and the uh, platforms and the devices that that you know like the user uh, opt-in rate because. If a user click deny, if a user click accept, we know what's going on. But what happened in situations that like a user didn't click on anything and just, you know, like uh, uh, order something for the website and like bounce out. We don't have any information on this. And we're trying to increase the opt-in rate. This is the optimization that we're doing all the time. 
and that's why we give the flexibility and this is like the, the main game here like it's a decision of the uh, client at the end how they want to present this kind of a banner and this is why we have this kind of admin interface that every client can like uh, create their own uh, banner uh, with a specific uh, legal specification if it's gdpr or if it's uh, ccpa itself and it's very straightforward in order to do it and we're trying not to nudge the clients or the users all the time so usually when i'm talking with clients i tell them like only like uh, surf up the uh, the banner only when it's like a major change and if we had talking about setting we give the uh, option to scan the website and to understand all the services there on the website because some of the uh, clients don't even know how many services or trackers they have on the website and then we help them to put this into categories and the categories are really like kind of the mirror of the of the of the website to understand okay what are the technologies that we have and what we are uh, tracking and to make the user like feel comfortable about okay this is marketing it's not essential so they will not follow me uh, on every step that I'm doing. And this is something that we're really trying to create in order to win this like 20, 30% of extra of the rate to give the ability for the uh, uh, clients to uh, meet and reach or retarget their clients. Also, again, like the different palette of colors or buttons, different font or the logo is possible. The layouts that we want to see, Again, it's like we get, we support and provide like a step-by-step -step, uh, guide to do it. But as you can see, it's like very, very straightforward. Also, the ability to give the different kind of content and to change the different labels that we're having, as you saw in the examples. And the implementation itself is a um, simple uh, JavaScript to the header plus changing of the different services itself. So for someone that like there's the role and understanding how to uh, indicate the uh, websites, it's something between 20 minutes for like a basic website to 35 minutes like for a complicated website or 40 minutes. And this is something that's really makes sense. And this can be a pre preview that we can show how a banner look like. So if you can see here, those are the different layers. This is how it's described. So you can always check on your own like uh, how it's look like. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, if I could ask an, another question. So, uh, you know, as I understand it, the, the GDPR is, uh, is in, in a way that it's like the user has to explicitly accept, you know, until this stuff happens. Uh, in California, you know, what's there currently, which is one of the only states that has something, it's uh, they don't have to press accept, the user just has to like be aware of it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know what will happen here federally will be more like California or GDPR. You know, no one knows. It, you know, we have to wait and see. Um, so right now, if if we have a um, you know a, a site in the U.S. and and there there California has like certain like you know they only require I think this this you guys probably know but like this store needs to make at least like twenty million dollars have customers in California etc. You know, so so given they have all this and we want you know, that California compliance message. Uh, does the customization allow that it's, uh, you know, it tracks everything, you know, it's like the California version, not the GDPR version. So like all the tracking is there by default. Okay. I yeah. Yeah. So we're, we, we, um, right now there's only two major ones, right? GDPR and, um, and CCPA. Although there is also in Brazil now it's the LPGD, I believe. So we just, we just today, um, started our Brazilian campaigns as well. So that's something that uh, we're, we're proud of. And what's what we're always having our, you know, our, 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 our finger on the button there is uh, whenever new legislation is going to come out for each specific state, we're going to have that IP reference and we're going to push out whatever needs to be pushed out. Right now, it's, we're not at that, that stage just yet, but when it does happen, this is what version, I don't know, 3.0 or 4.0, depending on when it happens, um, that's what it's gonna be like. So depending on where you are, that's the compliance you, we're gonna give, we're gonna allow, we're gonna give for, for whatever they need to be, so yeah. 
Do you guys happen to know what the California requirements are? Oh, off by heart? No. Or just a reference, okay. <laughs> no, not off by heart. Um, it's also, the CCPA is like the overall name for it, and then the actual legislation is CPRA. So there's like these, there's a bunch of new four letter words that, <laughs> brand new four letter swear words that we're all gonna be, uh, gonna have to learn. <laughs> but what, what's, so here's the thing, you, you actually, you, you mentioned it, Mike. It, it, in the US, what we're seeing from our experts and how, you know, we have some people inside uh, government, we were talking with like senators and governors and stuff like that. We're seeing it's gonna be more of a CPA-ish type and not GDPR when it comes to you you don't need to opt in. You already opted in. You only need to opt out if you don't want to, right? We're, that's what we're seeing. Again, this is not legally binding. I'm not a lawyer, um, but it, it looks like it's going to be that way. So it's going to be a little, the, the, the hit is going to be a little softer, right? Uh, but you will need to have the cookie banner and it will need to be, comply um, the way it needs to comply. So a lot of websites we see right now that do have a cookie banner aren't, aren't compliant. For example, okay, um, for many reasons, uh, there's each each again each state has a different uh, each each compliance legislation has different types of you know things that they that they have to they have to have. But um, we see it like for example, Microsoft isn't compliant, and they have a cookie banner, and they even have like this little thing where they can switch off or on, but they're not compliant. Again, they don't have to be right now, right? Because legislation, I don't think, isn't is in effect yet, and there's no enforcement. But they're not there yet, which is surprising, because they're Microsoft, right? Um, but yeah, that's just something to to think about. Just just having a a, a a cookie banner is not enough. Got it. Any other questions? Not question, but I just did a quick Google. So for California, it says uh, uh, companies that serve California residents uh, have at least twenty-five million in annual revenue, um, and, and uh, let's see, and uh, have personal data and reach fifty thousand people. So, so maybe we have an e-commerce client or two that you know fits fits the bill. You know, as in like they serve California because you know just naturally, if you have at least one customer there, you serve California. Um, and then if, if, so if you're doing at least $25 in annual revenue, um, and you have at least 50,000, you know, whatever customers, I guess, uh, technically, well, but to your point, you know, maybe, maybe there's no one enforcing it yet, but you know, um, if you're under, at least right now, you don't have to worry about it, but, but that's why I think we're learning about it just before. Yeah. It, it, this is, this is, um, again, like I said, in the beginning, this is, uh, less, right now of a legislative legislative push but it's uh this company's you, you, the, trust it's a trust push right everybody's aware there's data compliance yeah oh there we go yeah <laughs> are these all the ones that have got hit are these all the companies that got hit yeah yeah, yeah. this is this is like the, the report as you can see by date so every day like spain is spain and romania are really the hot countries now uh, to getting like uh, hit by like uh, those kind of things and this exactly where we're hiring new people so it's like uh, kind of like we're following the trend so spain is leading uh, with the amount of fines uh, in the march and april and uh and, and this is the thing you know it's like we follow um we really follow the legislation and i think and like also after the the conversation with the irene today that maybe some new rules will be on a uh, Europe uh, citizen that are traveling to the US, for example, because the law of GDPR can also cross a continent. So this is also something that they're discussing about. So if now, I don't know, I'm Oakley and I'm already like uh, having a, a need to be compliant in, in uh, Germany or in the Netherlands, and then like a, a, a European citizen is in the US, Okay, but he's on a US IP, but still, they're like uh, Europe citizens. So legally, they're, um, they are shifting. So it's really interesting to see where it goes. Um, and I think this, again, this is why we have this like really first introduction. And, you know, to, to give you some kind of like a heads up, this is the topic. 
maybe some of your uh, clients uh, that you're working with, uh, you know, asking about those topics. So we always here to to support on this aspect, I would say. And I think this is a, a discussion that will involve in the next two months for sure, because we see already like uh, three or four uh, states that uh, going to approve their like uh, privacy uh, compliance uh, regulation in the next uh, few months. So um, again, and thank around, yeah. For, uh, yeah, and there's around 12 or 13 right now states that are that have it on the table, right? So it's it's going to happen. Mike, you said at the beginning, it's going to happen eventually. Um, yes, this is a legislation push, but I, I kind of want the public opinion to be, listen, I, I don't want my data to be tracked and I want I want to see this banner because if I don't see this banner, there's something wrong. That means you're tracking me and, and, and I'm, I'm, I don't want you to track me, right? And if I do, and if it's okay, then yeah, I'll click accept all, right? Um, the, the weird thing is when when talking like this is again this is this now us businesses talking not uh, there's still going to be ads if that's not going anywhere it's just not going to be personalized right there again eventually these things will 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 kind of work themselves out algorithms will get better uh, God knows what's going on with with Facebook and and Google when it comes to data tracking and what they already know and all the information that they they already have. Eventually, the the ads are gonna kind of like go full circle, and they're gonna figure out anyway. They're gonna figure it out anyway, even if it's not so personalized. Um, so yeah, so it, it's gonna come around. But I think the first couple of months, uh, especially now with uh, the iOS update, that's that's a, that's a whole beast in itself. By the way, uh, that's like separate from a, a CMP. That's just. Apple saying like one big middle finger to to advertise like <laughs> to Facebook saying hey um, I don't care <laughs> right uh, that's that's a completely different story uh, but the the idea I, I even though I am like the market the marketer I can see where they're coming from and I, and I I see how important consent is and it is because. Just look at all the data privacy, like all the data breaches lately. LinkedIn, Clubhouse, that's like in the last week. TikTok, just uh, or or was it what were they before? Bite Dance, Dance Bite, forget. They just settled uh, a data privacy suit with ninety-two million, something like that. It's it's like I I don't I, I even as a marketer and even though I'm thinking business wise, I don't want people to track me every single where I go because eventually it's going to get ble breached. So I have to decide if I trust the company enough to give them my data. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, to send to ask a question to, to the ones that are here, like with which type of clients that like you're working with, is this a topic that like they're raising or having some kind of concern or you just said, wow, GDPR, this sounds very weird. Maybe we should join this session. Um so just just to open a open question to, to you guys like uh to hear from your uh, experience. Um I don't think I have any clients that really know too much about it to be honest, but you know, I think it's something we definitely should be more, you know, cognizant of, especially in this space. But I don't think too many of my clients know too much about it yet. Cool, yes, same here as well. Um I think definitely insightful learning all about this, um, something we can bring back to, and it would be helpful to get ahead of the curve here. I completely agree with my coworkers. I don't have any clients who know about it at this moment in time, but I do have, I'm not going to say they're, I'm not going to say paranoid, but I am going to say that they are a little more aware, but they don't know of the resources. So this would be something that I'm sure a few people would be interested to learn more about. I think just uh, sorry, Natalie. Yeah. No, it's okay. I was gonna say my main focus is talking more to like prospects and leads. So I wouldn't say initially like they have that knowledge just yet, but having this added benefit would be really great to bring up in initial calls just to show how smart sites is different from competitors. I think this is like uh, also one of the things that like uh, Mike, Philip, and myself spoke in, in in the first conversation. You know, maybe it's not there, but it's uh, coming. And to be before the curve, this what 
you know, uh, make you win the market. And like, I know how much you guys are growing and like uh, the topics that you're working on. So this is something that like, if you have some kind of a question, you can always write let, or let us know, like add us on LinkedIn. We will be very, very happy to help you guys to be in front of the curve. Like, and it's not just a presentation, it's understanding the uh, terms and how does it work, especially if you have like uh, clients that are working also in Europe. This is something that like uh, for sure uh, relates to them directly. And I, I, I think uh, we will try to, to uh, keep you posted every time we know about new regulation that is coming because we want you to know like, okay, this like a uh, major like four states already initiate their uh, privacy policy. And maybe you have, I don't know what is the split of, of the client and how you're working, if it's like regional or states or like all around the country. Um, but again, we will do our best to keep you guys uh, knowledgeable about uh, this topic. But for sure, this is something that in the next uh, three to five years is going to be very, very hot. And I see it with uh, some other companies that I'm working with um, that people have no idea what to do there. And if we're talking about trust, this especially comes into privacy. So yeah. as much as you will know, they will be depending on you. And this is usually where you want your clients because if they if they depend on you, they will not shop anywhere else. They will come to you because you're the special ones uh, specialized in this. So uh, we're always here uh, for that. Danielle, um, if you're if you're around, I think you we discussed uh, user centric so a bit yesterday uh, for a potential client. Um, I could ask the question, but if you're on, um, maybe you'll pose it better. Sure. Um, I guess just from my gen more general general point of view, what I was going to say before was, I think for a lot of my clients, it's not going to be a main concern of theirs unless Google, big data, or even governments are requiring this on their site. I feel like um, a lot of the time it's going to be people wanting to implement this only when they're told to kind of like how we've seen in the past but um specifically i have a client that does want to run internationally and they want to advertise in europe um and we kind of just wanted to know if we should put this on the site like as a simple banner on the bottom whereas we allow them to kind of know like what you were saying about um california like um, should they know that they're on the page and they're being tracked? And if not, we deny them to the site or should we do like more of a, like, I guess, approach where we let them deny that tracking? Just to give some more color on, uh, on this before guys, uh, answer. So specifically it's a, it's a cosmetic dentist actually. And uh, they uh, got a couple of clients internationally, like from Bermuda and a client from London in the past. And they said, hey, you know, what if we uh, advertise in Europe? Because people actually in Europe, for what, you know, one reason or another, search for the best cosmetic dentist in New York City. I guess New York City is known for their white teeth. I don't know. Um, so it is, uh, yeah, customers in Europe, uh, you know, so we want to run Google ads in Europe, which Danielle brought up to me. You know, and she was like, hey, like, is GDPR a concern? Again, the, the business is, is in New York City, but we want to advertise specifically in Europe. Do you guys know if, um, you know, do we need to be GDPR compliant in this case or because it's not a European company or, or how does that work? It's it's a risk assessment. Idan, go ahead. Uh, no. yeah. yeah, I want to say that at the end of the day, if you're doing already Google ads, you probably want to do retargeting. Okay. And in order to have retargeting, you need to get consent. Like this is like uh, really the main thought that we're talking about, like the marketing. And I agree with Philip about the, the risk assessment. But again, you want to use more tools. You want to use more marketing. If this is what you have in mind. And, and again, like every kind of like, I don't know, service they're giving, it's like 10 times more expensive from our uh, most expensive suite. So they can just have it and like uh, get uh, everything they want. Uh, in this case, this is how I would take it. But of course, yeah. we can go deeper. I would say. 
here's the thing. Let, let me re, let me slightly rephrase it done. You can without the uh, banner and without the CMP, you can still track, but then you're 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 open to liabilities, right? It's the risk assessment thing. Like technically, you can track, right? Because your 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 pixels are still being shown. Like your your pictures aren't being, pixels aren't being blocked, and cookies are still being sent. The thing is, do you want to be that 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 guy that got sued because you aren't compliant? And they and and um, there are cases out there. So the worst case is you won't be able to even be on European servers. So your website will not show. For example, if you don't, if you get sued and you don't comply and you, and you and you keep doing these offenses, you just won't be on European servers. So do you want to take that risk? All right, I'll I'll, I'll hopefully I won't see you in the news about some. some yeah, and we have to say that like we have also the ability to show it like only for, even if it's like on the um, uh, U.S. website. We do have the ability to show it only to EU um, residents. So, yeah. like by, by by catching their IP, we so it will not hurt their uh, own website. So they're not need to develop a new website or any like a landing page specifically for the European. They can use their own website. They can use Google Ads and just have like a CMP for the EU citizen that they're trying to uh, get their um, service with them. Yeah, I just Sounds have one like more question. Yeah. Oh. I was just going to make a joke. I was going to say it sounds like we should just avoid Spain and Romania. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> or use user centrics and then you're good. <laughs> um, just one more question about uh, Europe. So I know we're not like specifically going to be remarketing them or anything, but are we even allowed to collect? I understand the analytics and tracking, we're allowed to do that, but are we allowed to collect their information? No, nothing. You're not even allowed to. No, not even analytics. Uh, sorry, I, I maybe I misunderstood you. You're uh, not even allowed. To, yeah, not even analytics. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's at the level where you either um, the 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 CMP how it works is you either can see everything that they're doing or you can't. Or if they go through the little variables, they can pick and choose. But nobody really does that. It's just for it's more for compliance. It's part of the GDPR. It's it's law that they they should be able to choose between them. But at the end of the day, it's like ninety nine percent or ninety six percent or what what what's the number they done? Like ninety eight percent. Just click all. Right? They don't they don't go. Oh, sorry. It's ninety nine percent where they either click all or deny. Okay. It's like this very very small <laughs> minute group that actually go through the the variables and what what they're okay with and what they're not okay with. Um, but yeah, but this CMP blocks everything until it doesn't. Unfortunately, like that's just the way it is. That's how you. That's how you stay compliant. Okay. What if there's like a contact form and the user fills out the contact form? Again, it's like well, we're not tracking them behind the scenes. They're they're literally filling out their name and email and phone number, and they're saying, "Hey, I want your services." You know, that that's okay, right? I, be, I believe you can, you can, you can, yeah, it's a form. You can fill yeah, that. It's like you're getting their consent while they're doing it. <laughs> no, but as long, it really depends. Like this is why we have the, the crawler, right? The, 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 the goal of the crawler is to understand what kind of technologies are integrated behind this page, right? And if there is no technology, there is no reason, uh, uh, there is no reason to, to give consent on it. Uh, so if it's a landing page does not have any tracker and just like a, a form that like collect the data, this is okay. Yeah. Also, for example, there's things that are essential. PayPal, for example, for 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 that technology to run, for your business to run, it's essential. So that's necess necessarily, even if they deny all, PayPal still has to work, right? So there are technologies that uh, that are no matter what you do will work, but you also have to comply within the law depending on the region. So. PayPal is be, will be no matter what will be or the type or payment processing services will always be essential, um, but there's some like weird there's weird gray areas and in depending on the region some things are okay some regions are okay with you tracking doing this and not doing that but if you can if you have just a form and somebody fills it out that's you know they they know what they're doing it's not like a bot's doing it under your name hopefully <laughs> hopefully. <laughs>
Anything else? We can go. We can go broader. We can go marketing if you guys want to. If you're in the mood. Yeah, I think we have some uh, PPC uh, specialists here in the crowd. Do we? Danielle is. Yeah. Oh, yep. Okay. That's me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But uh, I, I, th I think we're all set. Uh, guys, do you have any more questions? OK, I think we can wrap it up here just five minutes early. Um, thank you for a very um, informative lunch and learn. Um, uh, again, just to reinforce, um, I, 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 I'm happy that you guys are like in the fold and we you know, have you as a connection. Um, it, you know, it sounds like just the general consensus that you know, uh, no one's being proactive about it you know, in terms of no businesses is out looking for it. Uh, which I guess is expected, which is okay. Uh, but uh, you know, this is coming, and as soon as we kind of like see this uh, play out, uh, you know, we're gonna definitely tap on you guys again as a resource. Um, so again, um, you know, thanks so much, and we look forward to working with you more. Awesome. Yeah. Have a good one. And yeah, no, nobody knows anything until until they know about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's it. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. It was great meeting everybody. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Friday. Have a good Friday. Have a great weekend. Bye. You bye, too. Bye. Bye. Happy Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday. Oh, but you're here. I'll stay here. Oh, it's still recording. Let's yeah. get off. <laughs> yeah. yeah.